original co-founder and CEO of Ledger X, OTC and the Rivers Exchange. Greg, the founder of Akash Network. I'm the COO of a venture studio called Thesis. There's at least a 250x potential there. I got UA compensation. I'm founder and CEO for Swan Blocks. I'm the founder of Astronism Ventures and Pulsar Money. Compute, storage, you know, wireless functionality, complete on-chain data sets from Genesis to TIP, taking provider, leveraging DVT technology. We're kind of like a prime broker in the crypto space. Largest ecosystem on the XRP ledger. and Offer staking and DeFi yields to their users. Done with the funding round or still going on right now? We're still raising at this point. Uh, miners with hosting. Robotics, AI, med tech. Yeah, we've read flipped out. I can't sleep until I check the price. What's happening, guys? We are at the mainnet event here in New York. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little scoop of what's happening. Uh, I'll be here for the next three days and I'll be speaking to all the founders um, and a lot of people from the space. Shrey TV, baby. Hey, how you doing? Hi. I'm Shrey. Shrey, like plus consistent. Hi, Mike. How are you? So tell me more about Aquarium. What do you do for a living? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I am leading partnerships at a company called Sologenic, which is... Sologenic. Yes, it's sort of the sister project of Aquarium. Uh, Sologenic is a layer two built on XRPL, but we are actually a chain agnostic platform and that solution. It's a built on XRPL. Yes. Oh, wow. Fantastic. We're, we're chain agnostic and Corium is our sister project, so definitely absolute solutions alongside the Corium team. Uh, but we're working on a number of different initiatives, working on RWA compensation. My role really is to build out the regulated arm of our business to work with financial institutions, asset issuers, and uh, essentially bring real-world assets to, to Any market. big investors backing you? So our co-founders, uh, Bob Ross and Reza Bashash, actually just launched, so just launched, the end of last year, launched a VC fund called Tornest, and they're investing in us. They're also investing in other projects with robotics, AI, med tech, and certainly blockchain projects as well. Uh, oh, fantastic. So this one's a, Corium is a layer one, and the other project you mentioned, Sologenic. Sologenic. What does that do? So it's really just the business end of things where we're building all sorts of solutions uh, for institutions or any asset issuer looking to tokenize an asset. One of the main things that we're focused on right now is actually tokenizing stocks and ETFs. Uh, our goal really is to roll that out to folks in the crypto community who want to be able to tokenize and, and own these assets, uh, you know, self custody these types of assets. But we're also building solutions that have built solutions for institutions that perhaps want to tokenize funds or need a tokenization partner to figure out the rents. Oh, fantastic. So, uh, Corium is involved in tokenization of uh, stocks, equities. Correct, correct. So Sologenic is uh, essentially the business that's going to be facilitating it. And we're chain agnostic. And so it's really going to be dependent on the project itself, the, the RWA asset, the real world asset that we're going to be tokenizing, whether we use Corium or XRPL or another chain. Uh, but Corium is absolutely designed for tokenization. We believe it's a better solution than, say, Ethereum or some of the other larger chains out there. Um, so we're, we're definitely exploring that as an opportunity. RWA is the future. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate yeah. it. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise. Hey, Fabio. How are you? Nice to meet you, Shrey. Likewise. Uh, Fabio, tell me uh, more about your project. What do you do for a living, by the way? <laughs> well, um, part of the Corium team in the beginning, we launched a layer one blockchain, which was super exciting. Um, and before that, I was also part of the Sologenic team, which is the largest ecosystem on the XRP ledger, and it's uh, working on tokenizing stocks, ETFs, and commodities. So very excited to be here. Yeah, the, the, the XRP fans going to love you. <laughs> so, guys, Corium is the project. Okay. So, tell me more about uh, Sologenic and Corium. 
Right. So, solo genic right now, uh, it was built out of a necessity to have an interface on the XRP ledger, right? They had a robust technology that we wanted to offer a user friendly experience for. So, we built the DEX, the first component, built a market, market index. At the time, we built an NFT marketplace and we also have a decentralized wallet. So all of that lives in the XRPLG ecosystem of interfaces for you to interact with the native features of that blockchain, right? Train any cryptos, list them, issue tokens, everything's cool. Um, but the vision was we build that for crypto first, but we want to bring tokenized assets. But from the beginning, that was a plan. So we built the ecosystem decentralized right now. But at some point, uh, we want to incorporate these assets into the existing user base that we have and, and provide access to that. Um, Corium comes into play as a layer one that we built in order to make this tokenization process more programmable, right? Because um, we saw a need for a smart contract. Well, that's why we build our own layer one uh, with smart tokens, which is our flagship technology. Corium's built on what? It was built on top of the Cosmos SDK, but it's its own layer one blockchain, right? Okay. Uh, if you're familiar with Cosmos, what we built on top is simply uh, three modules, if I'm not mistaken. One is it having deterministic fees. So you can predict how much you're going to spend. This is very important for institutions specifically. Two, we built smart tokens, just treating uh, native assets as first class citizens on the blockchain and allowing them to have programmable features for compliance or for business use cases, such as wallet way listing, setting up burn rates, um, interacting with IBC as well. Uh, smart contract, you can plug okay. if you want your tokens to be used on smart contracts or not. Mm. Like it's very programmable without code. To a dashboard, you can already implement this function. We got it's very appealing for um, any business use case on the blockchain that needs to be in compliance with certain regulatory frameworks that require these rules of the token plug. Okay, perfect. Awesome, man. Thanks for your time. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. What do you do for a living? Sure, I run business development for a company called Sonarverse. Okay, Sonarverse, okay. So we provide complete on-chain data sets from Genesis to TIP for 70 plus blockchains um, and more coming. Do you have a token out? We're not, we're a, we're a company, we're not a DAO. So we don't have a token on board. So you don't, in the future, you don't think that they will have a token there we're we're thinking about it but it's not quite so large i don't want to get any hopes on it. okay how about that tell me uh top five projects you like right now top five projects wow okay um one is called gen layer which is crypto by a crypto ai play um another jet layer you said gen layer yeah gen g-e-n g-e-n l-a-y-e-r Okay. Another one that we see lots of demand for is time, the blockchain itself, the Telegram blockchain. Okay. Um, what? P-O-N, Tan. P-O-N, yeah. Um, I gotta think about a few more. You caught me off guard. <laughs> it's okay. No worries, man. So Tan and, uh, the first one you said, I forgot. It's called Gen Layer. So Jet Layer. Blockchain okay. that uses, um, the internet to run smart contracts. Okay. Using LLMs to call on the internet, essentially. What is it? You can run smart contracts with unstructured data. Okay. And how long have you been into, uh, blockchain? Blockchain. I've been in blockchain since 2016. So, um, how did you get into it? I was at a fintech company. We were doing trade finance. We were trying to bring the assets on chain. Started researching blockchain. Looked into, read the Ethereum white paper. Got very interested in smart contracts. And then here I am, eight years later. Awesome, man. Thank you for your time. Yeah, man. Thank you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Likewise. Hi, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? Hi, I'm Shrey. Jason. Jason, what do you do for a living? I sell uh, miners with hosting at Easy Blockchain. Oh, interesting. How do you find the mainnet event? What cryptos uh, you like? The mainnet event is very nice. Um, learning a lot of stuff. Uh, the cryptos I like are Bitcoin is the most important to me. But as far as mining goes, Caspa and Alephium, Litecoin and Dogecoin, those are my favorites right now. Can you explain the viewers uh, what do you do? What kind of equipment? You sell, and how do they find you? So they come to the website, easyblockchain.net, and then they fill out the form, and then me or someone else will get back to them and 
help them choose what kind of mining equipment they want to get, or perhaps they already own the mining equipment, they just need us to host it, in which case, sign the contract and ship it to us, we'll get it up and running, and they'll be mining. Oh, awesome. So an average individual can still contact you? Yes. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hey, Jack. How's it going? Trey, how are you? Doing well, how are you? So, Jack, what do you do? What do you do for a living? Yeah, so I head up this development from Sari on our protocol services side. Uh, so sort of like an outsourced investor relations-like service for protocol teams. Oh, nice. And how do you find uh, blockchain future? What do you think uh, is the future and what, what are your prospects? Hmm. Yeah, so pretty broad question. A lot of ways this could go, but I think more or less it's becoming less of kind of like a homogenized industry, right? It's almost like, you know, what are your thoughts on the internet, right? Yeah, so so to say like it's becoming kind of more specialized of like individual sectors. So like something we follow a lot is like Deepin and how uh, a lot of more fiscal infrastructure networks are starting to leverage uh, crypto to kind of bootstrap growth, bootstrap a supply side for like compute, storage, you know, wireless functionality, um, you've seen a ton of growth there, a lot of fundraising, a lot of on-chain activity kind of starting to... Say top five projects you like. Top five projects I like. Um, so Helium uh, is okay. one of my favorites. I've kind of followed them for a while. It was an early like hotspot button um, operator. Um, others, uh, I'd say Akash, they're one of our big partners. They were super early in decentralized compute. Okay. Um maybe from a DeFi perspective. Um, yeah, I really like Aave, kind of like, you know, the OGs in, in the lending world. I came from traditional finance, used to work in banking. And so the idea Perfect. of like decentralized credit markets really appealed to me. Yeah. Um, How are you dealing with the bear market? So, uh, yeah, it's one of the things that's like, I think bear markets are very necessary in an industry where... It brings a lot of hype, right? When, when asset prices are rising, it, it, there's a lot of excitement generated mm. and that's good, right? It brings more investment, more builders, but like a lot of noise. And so right. I think bear markets are great times to just like be heads down and like build what you're building. Absolutely. Um, and so escape a lot of the, the noise of bear, of bull markets. How did so, you get into blockchain? So my brother, um, he was sort of an early cypherpunk libertarian back in the day. Uh, and was preaching the good word right back in 2012, 2013. And nice. I became very like ideologically aligned with the idea of decentralized non-sovereign money. And then around the time of the ETH launch, understanding how, um, it just impacts outside just money, right? So initially right. like DeFi was a big draw to me, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. um, seeing how we can pretty much bring a lot of economic activity on chain in again permissionless decentralized fashion hey how's it going hey what's up man hi i'm hey, trey i'm zach what's up zach zach what do you do for a living so i'm the ceo of genzio and we do social media marketing for companies oh that's awesome man yeah. amazing so what do you think about that main net event and what do you think about crypto I mean, I think the main net event is awesome. It's a really great crowd here, very institutional, and I'm bullish on crypto. Oh, nice! Like crypto is my life. Any I'm particular a addict? I'm addicted. I'm mad. <laughs> we read crypto. I can't sleep until I check the price. Awesome. Which result coins do you like? I like Dogecoin, the classic. You gotta say it's shit. Shit is lit. Moo dang. Right now, I feel like I have something to go. And I, I'm a believer in Mother. I, I had my doubts, but apparently the, the rodeo was out of this world. Mother is a crypto? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mother oh. by Iggy. Iggy okay. Azalea. Oh, I, I become okay. Bullish on that. Oh, nice. Man, so you're just like me, a DJ. <laughs> yeah. Max DJ. DJ Perfect. The win. Perfect. This is awesome, man. Thank you. How's it going? How's it going? My name is Bono. Bono, nice I'm Trey. What do you do for a living? Uh, well, I uh, work at Safe Stake as a partnership. What is it called? Safe, Safe Stake. Stake. Okay. Yeah. Good. So we are a staking provider leveraging DVT technology. Okay. And the coin listed? What, what's the coin uh, called? The coin is called DVT. So it's not listed yet. It's on Uniswap. DVD. DVT with a T. With a tiger. DVT. That's a tiger, yes. Okay, good. And what's the market cap? The market cap is 2.5 million. 2.5 million? Yes. Oh, small cap. Yes. That's good. And is it listed on the US exchanges? No, not yet. Only on Uniswap. 
Okay, and that's good. Uniswap. Yes. Okay, what else you can tell about the project? Well, we're decentralizing Ethereum staking with DDT, meaning that we decentralize and divide validator duties across operating committee, which consists four different operators, which the validator chooses uh, himself. Okay. Personally, which cryptos you like? Top five. Uh, I'm pretty basic. So Bitcoin, ETH, Solana, and then let's do a couple of meme coins. Let's go with Doge. Why not? And let's do it. Like I said, I'm basic. So let's say Pepe. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks for your time, man. Thanks for your time as well, man. Hey, how's it going? Handled that. How are you? I'm Trey. William. William? Yeah. What do you do for a living? Um, I'm on the business side of Kiln, uh, so I'm helping grow the company, specifically looking at the Americas. K-I-L-N. Okay. Yeah. It's an old word for oven. Okay. Is the project live right now, the mainnet? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we're, we're not a, a blockchain or a foundation. We help businesses um, uh, offer staking and DeFi yields to their users. Uh, so we partner with the largest custodians, exchanges, and wallets to uh, set up their earn offerings. Oh, awesome. You have a token on? So we don't have our own token, uh, but uh, we basically help uh, distribute the tokens of other projects and uh, we connect them with the places that have the most users. Um, so we act as a, a great distributor for uh, for uh, new tokens and uh, yeah, any DeFi projects that want to plug into the biggest crypto platforms. Fantastic. Uh, okay, which five tokens do you like, personally? Per yeah, personally, I'm a big Ethereum guy. Uh, recently, I've been looking a little bit at Solana, seems like there's a lot going on there. Uh, I'm also uh, personally invested in a pretty obscure project called Rose, which has uh, some privacy. Oh, it's called Rose. Rose. Oh, it's it's yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's great that you know it. Uh -huh. And uh, maybe I'll just mention one more. Uh, I'm quite interested in Bitcoin. And recently, one thing that we're doing is uh, partnering with uh, Bitcoin reward uh, protocols, uh, things like Mezzo, Babylon, Stacks, Core. Uh, it's pretty exciting to see uh, that you can put Bitcoin to work now. Yeah, they're building on it, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, perfect. Thanks for your time, man. Yeah, Appreciate it. Hey, how's it going? Hey, go well. Hi, I'm Sheree. I'm Jack Anderson. Nice to meet you. Jack, you work for Masari? Yeah, work for Masari. Oh, awesome. Uh, tell the viewers what your company does. I work for our protocol services uh, division, and we're selling research to all protocols around the industry, um, promoting your brand, highlighting your metrics to the community, and doing something that's very similar to a 10Q that traditional investors get. But in Web3. Awesome. So it's like you have tools where investors can know on-chain and off-chain data, right? The charts and everything. Absolutely. Charting, we have a whole team of analysts in-house that are specialized in different sectors in the industry. Um, and we have a lot of quantitative data that we're pulling on for on-chain metrics, uh, from exchange volume trading. And then our analysts uh, have really good qualitative spin to talk about roadmap uh, and innovation wherever, wherever it's going on. Where people can find you? What's the website called? Yeah, we're at Mazari.io. And if you go to our research, you can check us out in the protocol reports. Okay. Is there a subscription for it? For protocol reports, they're made all free for the community, um, the protocols, people who use them, and potential investors. So you can actually check out our protocol reports on Bloomberg, Definitive, Thompson Reuters as well. That's where our distribution goes, but you visit all of your research right at Mazari.io. Awesome. Thanks for your time, Matt. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Oh, you're doing it, right? Yes. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, Greg. I don't have to I tell people. All oh, right. <laughs> These are awesome, right? Very good. Okay. Greg's the founder of Akash Network. Hi, Greg. Tell us more about the project, please. <laughs> it's kind of a little weird to talk to. <laughs> uh, well, so Akash is the world's first decentralized super cloud. And like the name suggests, it is a super cloud that sits on pretty much any cloud capable compute, usually from People that have underutilized capacity contribute to this massive super cloud, uh, which is decentralized, permissionless, and offers self-custodial deployments. And the benefit is the users get to enjoy 80% discount on cloud computing resources, and more importantly, get access to resources that are very hard to get. GPUs, for example, which is a lifeblood of AI, Akash is the best place to get high density GPUs mm -hmm. at prices that is one third than what you would normally pay because it can go places where normal, uh, uh, cloud or central. So you're computing right now, like a competitor would be like AWS. 
Yes, yeah. absolutely. So okay. AWS, H100 and AWS. Last I checked was $12 an hour. Hakash is $1.50 an hour. Now, so how do you compare with Filecoin? Filecoin is storage. Hakash okay. is compute. Okay. So Hakash has these GPUs and like they can, you can deploy an AI model. Okay. I don't know if you use uh, Venice or AI. Do you know what it is? No, not yet. So it's Eric, you know, Eric Voorhees, right? Okay. Uh, he's a crypto OG. He uh -huh. has a new company called Benisar AI, which is a censorship resistant no. private yeah. chat bot. Like okay. chat GPD, but that's fully private. Oh, wow. Censorship is, I use it to do my medical diagnosis that I won't be comfortable uploading chat GPD because right. they can't use my data. Yes. So, um, so Venice is like built on a car, right? Can use the GPUs on a car to run AI models and deliver the real data. Oh, wow. Oh. NVIDIA is being used on a car. NVIDIA uses a car. Uh, to reach NVIDIA's own customers that have these GPUs, but they're not using them. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Because NVIDIA wants to make sure they don't want to turn, off, turn down customers. It takes about 18 months to get a chip on NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. So instead of turning down customers, they're like, oh, look, we have this thing, but I can't just we still get access to the GPUs if people are not using it. So that's one of the incredible ways people use the cost today. And, and you, can't, you can only do that with the cost. You can't do it with anything else out there. What's coming up for 2025, 2026? Woo, man, 26 is a, well, <laughs> so let's take a step back, you know, mm -hmm. by 2030, uh, over 5% of global GDP will be spent on the active. Wow. That's yes. incredible. That's incredible. Uh, and if you were to do the current state of things on Four or five billion parameter model, which is the most advanced open source model mm -hmm. done by Lama. It's phenomenal. Wow. Uh, if we were to deploy that in production at, at decent, I would say, uh, redundancy, mm -hmm. kind of acceptable levels of redundancy, not decent, mm -hmm. it'll take 24 H100s, which is the most advanced chip NVIDIA makes to run this model. 24 H100s. On a this study. And that can serve up to maybe 30 people concurrently. The same concurrently in the, se in the sense that we are constantly talking about AI. All our surroundings is con constantly being optimized by AI. The constant communication between the AI and the human. Mm -hmm. So it takes about one chip per human being to do it instance. Okay. So that's the limitation. In wow. Media makes 750,000 chips. Wow. It's 100 per year. Wow. So the growth so for Akash networks, I think, Sky's the limit. Apple announced one billion devices will be using AI. Wow. Okay. So one billion devices, you have 750,000 chip, chips. And where do you think you're going to go? You got to look inward. There's no way in hell NVIDIA, TSMC, and any of the supply chain has a capacity to address that load. Especially with the current geopolitical climate, which is very restrictive in terms of supply chain constraints because you're... So understand the opportunity here is to really, uh, you know, solve a, an incredible problem for the globe at a, at a planetary scale. Mm -hmm. In fact, you would go out ex, extra planetary, you would go to space. We have, we have a few ideas we're working on. You're on working on. <laughs> Here's the thing, right? So, so right now, have you used Starlink mobile? Yes. It's about the size of an iPad. Yes. Okay. So a size of an iPad device can connect to satellite internet. Mm -hmm. and come back and that will be reduced to a cell phone so soon cell phones can directly connect to the internet skipping this entire infrastructure we built for decades now to space wow so if the space has ai it has to the space has to come back to earth mm -hmm. to get ai i don't know what the latency i would assume maybe three to one millisecond latency i think okay so if you put the ai on the space you can cut the speed by half with another advantage being power. Okay. So on the, on, on planet Earth, a square mile, uh, of solar panels will give you about, uh, 2.2 gigawatts of power. Okay. You need, you know, you need a lot of power to run AI, mm -hmm. but it's very challenging to store the power until you do the continuous, you know, power. So that's the ideas they were working on, but in space, you get continuous. Always access to sun. There's no limit. And you get 30% more efficiency because there's no atmosphere. That's Fantastic. limiting. So you have unlimited space, uh, unlimited uh, continuous power source 
The entire Starlink satellite system is powered by. So you have ability to put, put in low Earth orbit real data centers on satellites so that we have essentially, uh, we, we shield ourselves from several problems. We shield ourselves from limiting mm-hmm. computational access to any part of the globe. And also we shield ourselves on some potential global con- Wow. Beaming satellites who can stop you. And how does Akash Network play a role in this? I mean, there are going to be GPUs everywhere. That's the point I'm trying to say. Yeah. It's not going to be one company. It's not going to be one. All right, ladies, so get off the one next wow. set cloud GPU network. That's why you call it yeah, Akash Network. Wait, I'm sorry, here. Akash. I'm going to let them take it away. Akash is the sky. That's what yeah, it's the sky. Clouds are created. That's what yes. the future is. I think ultimately, the end goal for Akash is to go to space. Thumbs up. Right? Awesome. So I think it's going to be Any big partnership you're excited about? Of yeah. course, I can't tell. <laughs> there are a lot of things we're working on. And media is a big partner. I mean, right. So we can attract the media. We can attract, you know. Awesome, man. Really proud of you. Awesome. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, how are you? Hi. Nice dress. Thank you. What do you do for a living? I'm COO of a venture studio called Thesis. It's a, a Bitcoin focused studio that builds whole bunch of different projects um mostly around DeFi. we've got fold which is um a bitcoin uh, rewards credit cards you can stack saps that are points um tbtc it's a bitcoin bridge that started on ethereum but now it's on arbitrum solano a whole bunch of other side chains and now we're working on mezzo uh which is a bitcoin l2 and acre a um a staking project for bitcoin how can people find you uh, so I, I'm on Twitter. Um, yeah, at C Recal, C R E C K H O W. Um, but you can also check out our website, thesis.co. Thesis, you said? Thesis. Mm-hmm. Thesis.co. Dot co, yes. Like okay, the fantastic. Thesis of a paper. <laughs> awesome. It's good to see women in crypto. Yeah, I've been in the space for 10 years, so there's a little more, a few more women now than there were back then. Awesome. That's fantastic. <laughs> what do you see the future of uh, blockchain? Um, the future of blockchain, I mean, I think there's a lot of different possibilities. Um, I'm very bullish on Bitcoin, obviously. Um, Bitcoin is you know, the OG asset, and I think that... Um, with the advent of L2s, there's a lot that's going to be built on top of it. Like Bitcoin Fi, we're going to see like what we saw with DeFi, with Ethereum on top of Bitcoin. Uh, but I also think that there's some really interesting things happening in the larger blockchain space around uh, real world assets. Um, uh, Deepin, physical infrastructure, I think is, is interesting. Um, and like social and gaming, like all that fun stuff you're seeing on Solana, that's going to keep popping up, I think. Do you think the next narrative, uh, this run will be Deepin? Potentially. I think maybe it might be two runs out. Could be a little early. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Appreciate it. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Hi, nice I'm Shrey. Dylan, nice to meet you. Dylan, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work in research at Masari, primarily covering the deep end sector. Deep end? Yeah. Oh, so tell me more about it. Um, it's basically a way to bootstrap uh, physical networks, so like wireless network, you know, like virtual power plant, you know, like solar panels, and these tokens, and we basically deploy the network faster. Which deep end tokens uh, you're bullish on? Um, I really like GeoNet, um, Glow. Uh, GeoNet, you said? GeoNet, yeah, they're an RTK. G O N E T? Geo. Uh, the ticker is G E O D. G O D Net. Oh, G O D Net. Yeah, G O D Net. And the second one was Glow? Glow, yeah. They're like a uh, solar farm deployment um, mechanism. Uh, they basically create carpet for it. Okay. Any uh, DeFi projects you like? New uh, ones? DeFi like Aero, Aerodrome, um, Sanctum. Um, Which one was the second one? Sanctum. Sanctum. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd say those are like the two I like the most. Like all the, like, Any meme coins? Meme coins. Um, I, I'm more, more of a fundamentals based guy. I've been with, obviously. Um, nothing new is really piqued my interest. Really. Got it. Perfect. Thanks for your time, man. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, David. Yeah. Hi. What do you do for a living? I work for Xbox and I do institutional sales. Oh, fantastic. So can you uh, elaborate a little more what, what is involved in the institution sales and uh, what are you bullish on right now? 
Yeah, sure. So we're kind of like a prime broker in the crypto space where we aggregate liquidity from tons of uh, exchanges, OTC desks, and um, uh, market makers. And so we basically help our clients get best in class execution. And so we look for crypto hedge funds and other people that are just doing lots of volume and we help them out on execution and custody. Awesome. Where do you think the money is flowing right now? Um, I think it's, there's definitely a lot of interest in DeFi. Obviously, in terms of just institutional volume, Bitcoin and ETH are just, there's, there's a lot of volume there still. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and you think DeFi is going to grow even bigger this, this run? Oh, definitely. Yeah. What coins do you like in DeFi? Um, in DeFi, I think, I think there could be a lot of interesting projects on top of Bitcoin, like Bitcoin L2 type stuff. So maybe, right. maybe that's not necessarily DeFi, but like DeFi on top of Bitcoin. I think it's pretty interesting. Awesome. Your top five altcoins you like? Top five altcoins. Honestly, I'm Bitcoin, 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 Bitcoin. <laughs> you found like a Bitcoin maximalist right now. So. Oh, awesome, yeah, man. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks for your time, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hi, I'm Shrey. Hey, Shrey. My name is Mahesh. Mahesh, what do you do for a living? So I run a startup called Lucrisma. So what we do is we enable our users to consolidate all of their different financial data, things like bank accounts, crypto wallets, Coinbase finance, identity, credit scores, pay stuff, all those kind of things, right? And then we tokenize that. So what's the purpose of the tokenization? It is twofold. One, it keeps your data private. But also, it enables you to access different financial services in TradFi as well as DeFi, things like you know, mortgages, auto loans, DeFi loans, staking, so on and so forth. What is the token called again? So it's called Lucri oh, it's So Lucrisma is the DAP, and the token is called LCR. U C R I S M A. L U C R. Oh, yeah. L U C R I S M A. Correct. Okay, perfect. And the token's ticker symbol is? LCR is the token that we will be launching. Our plan is to launch it in uh, Q1 of next year. Oh, awesome. And you have partnerships with the uh, exchanges? You think uh, which exchanges you'll be launching in the US? Yes. So we do have uh, certain part partnerships that we've done with a few of the... Um, they're, they're not US-based exchanges. They're primarily um, overseas. Uh, but yes, we do have partnerships with that. You're done with the funding round or still going on, right? We're still raising at this point. So we've been bootstrapped, uh, over the last year, year and a half. Okay. Uh, and we launched the product. Uh, we are currently in beta. We've uh, launched it on the Polygon, uh, chain. And, uh, we are looking to raise our, uh, pre seed round. We're looking to raise, uh, around of one million dollars. One million dollars? Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Good luck with the project and, uh, uh, we'll, we will, we can talk more on the podcast. Absolutely. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Shrey. Bob. Shrey, nice to I'm meet Shrey. you. Yeah, Likewise. Bob, yeah. Bob, what do you do for a living? Uh, for a living? Yeah. So we started a company called Ledger AI. Uh, founded it with, uh, Paul Chow, one of my, one of four co-founders. Uh, he was one of the, uh, original co-founder and CEO of Ledger X, OTC and the Rivers Exchange. Uh, and then we, uh, we met while I was working at Binance US leading their financial operations. Uh, ended oh, nice. up, uh, hanging with him a little bit at uh, an event we were at. And, uh, the rest is history. We became dear friends, started talking about crazy things. AI, uh, became a monster opportunity in the last year. Uh, took that to another level, uh, with thinking how to integrate tokens. Okay. Uh, so being interviewed right now <laughs> nice hi i'm shrey how are you oh, nice to meet you, you. you? likewise um, and so we uh we decided to create an ai bot for uh board concierge so we named it aura vision uh what it's going to be able to do is take large language models and be able to take what chat gbt and open ai has done but then also integrate it with companies internal operations software such as salesforce adp um quickbooks take that data build a beautiful dashboard obviously for a board to be able to present and look at outside market data plus internal, and then also be able to be proactive in nature, you know, for any worldwide events that occur, uh, and basically be like the chief administrative officer on steroids using AI. Wow. And what is the token called? Token is called Ledger. Uh, it's Ledger AI. So the Ledger token we actually have, we launched it on, uh, September 20th, which was Paul Chow's birthday. So it was a great birthday gift. Oh, around. wow. <laughs> hit, uh, hit 23 million market cap that night. Uh, awesome. Really, really cool. 
Um, but again, the token, you know, we're building infrastructure to be able to use it within that ecosystem and pay for, uh, services to access and get into the Eurovision network. So, uh, is it li- listed on the U.S. exchanges? Uh, not, not any central exchange right now is trading through Uniswap on, uh, the DeFi side. So, uh, we're okay. working on, you know, getting that on in the next uh, month or so onto several different exchanges. So we're working, Perfect. you know, go, you gotta go to the levels tier two, tier one exchange and, uh, you know, having good relationships in the, uh, in the industry. I've used a lot of my network, but, uh, try to build something special and what's better than the ledger name. So that is awesome, man. Yeah, Congratulations. Cool yeah. <laughs> Thanks for well, the interview. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, how you doing? Hi, Shri. Hi. What's your name? Alex. Alex, uh, what do you do for a living? I'm the founder of Astralizer Ventures and Pulsar Money. Okay, can you can you say the name again? Pulsar Money and Astralizer Ventures. Pulsar Money. Yeah. Okay, awesome. I love the name. Yeah. Fantastic. Where people can find you and tell me more what you do. Um, on Twitter, we've got social payments where you can link to your social media accounts and like send money on uh, on on social media. Uh, like then you can find us on Twitter, but on the website on Pulsar Money. Like, uh, it's, it's, we are building the smart payments hub and has several modules for like both personal, like the social payments, airdrop infrastructure, uh, and where you can like participate in other airdrops, payment links and some, some pretty cool things that like a lot of people are using. Uh-huh. Currently we have around 200k users. And then we've got solutions for like business as well, like, uh, invoices, vesting solutions, payrolls, uh, quite some cool things and, uh, many more things are, are coming. Fantastic. Can you tell viewers uh, your app again? Uh, the full name slowly. Pulsar.money. That's the website. Pulsar.money. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Right. Mm-hmm. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good, Shay. How are you doing, man? Yes. What's your name? My name's Player One Taco. Oh, Player One Taco. I love it, man. Awesome name. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you do for a living? Uh, so I help build out different projects. Right now, I'm helping build out Manifest AI. Um, Manifest is a Cosmos app chain, uh, working on decentralized compute and, and providing open source, uh, power for builders in the AI space. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. How do I, how do people find you? So they can find us online at manifestai.org. Or they can find us on Twitter at Manifest AIS. If you have top five cryptos, you want to pick which one will you pick? Oh, are we looking for like stability or like the moon? Moon. Let's pick the moon. All right. So I would pick Stella, uh, which is on Moonbeam. It is the token of Stella swap. There's at least a 250 X potential there. Okay. Um, I would pick polka dot just because I think there's some long term plays in polka dot. That's a good 5x. Solana, obviously, for a good 5 to 6x. Uh, Bitcoin, if you're wanting to be a little bit stable, I see maybe about a 2x in this cycle by this time next year. Um, but, uh, one of the two, two really big, uh, unknowns, Sui and Telos. Nice. Looks like a good list. Thank you. Thank you for dying. Appreciate it. Yeah. How you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Hi, good. I'm Shrey. Uh, Allah. Hi, Ala. Well, what do you do for a living? I'm uh, founder and CEO for Smart Blocks. Smart uh, Blocks? Yeah. Oh, that's your uh, Smart Blocks. Okay, perfect. And uh, what does it do? So um, uh, they call us the Zapier of the blockchain. Uh, we are providing infrastructure to connect Web2 with Web3, just drag and drop, helping businesses to connect all the, meta, uh, the data points uh, into their systems. Fantastic. Is the token out? Um, not yet. We're uh, preparing for that very soon. We're going to announce it. When do you expect it? Um, uh, tentatively, like, um, beginning of next year, but, uh, to be confirmed. How can people find you? Uh, swanblocks.io, uh, also, uh, on LinkedIn and other social media listed on our website. Okay. Perfect. And, the uh, top five cryptos you like? Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, anything related to the ecosystem built on, uh, Solana base. Um, but yeah, like, in general, those. Okay, perfect. Thanks for your time. No, no worries. Appreciate it. Wow. So you live here. You're in New York. Yeah. I live in Brooklyn. Oh, nice. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a graphic designer, illustrator, and uh, tattoo arts. Oh, wow. All in one, man. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. That's fantastic. And living in New York, that's amazing. Are you by any chance into crypto? What? Are you by any chance into crypto? Crypto. Crypto. No, 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 no. 
Oh, I'm here for the uh, conference, the mainnet conference. Oh, okay, cool. This is beautiful, man. No, it's it's a look, look at that. Yeah, amazing. 